If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, transformational shaman and spiritual coach. As always, on Mondays, I am here with my wonderful co-host and fellow fellow spiritual coach, Joshua Radawan. And we are talking today about boundaries for empaths. Can my aura get a restraining order? <laughs> it's like... Dude, you come up with the best titles. Okay. So we're going to talk about boundaries today from the perspective of just like interpersonal boundaries. But then at the end, we're going to talk about the energetics of boundaries and how those are, are impacted. And then there is going to be a link at the end for you to get access to a free e-course for how to adjust your energetics so that you can improve your experience as an empath. So that that is in the show notes right now. I'm going to say it up front in case you're like, oh my God, I must have that right now. It's in the show notes. Don't panic. But uh, the we're going to talk about boundaries from an interpersonal perspective first because that's usually what people think of and then, then you can get the, the download later. So I'll remind you about that at the end of the episode. Don't panic. Okay. So... Boundaries, boundaries. Oh my God, boundaries. You know, I had the worst boundaries when I first started in this journey. And, you know, the, the thing for me was a combination of things, right? It was one, I didn't want to say no because my value was in what I could do for others. And so saying no meant that I didn't have any value for them. I also didn't want to say no because I was afraid of the conflict that would come from saying no. And the reason I'm afraid of the I was afraid of the conflict was because I was a very angry person. And if somebody got defensive and started coming at my face, I would blow up and shred them to within an inch of their lives and then feel bad about it for weeks afterwards, right? Because I was always right at my boiling point and it took very little to tip me over the edge. And so I avoided conflict at all costs, which of course made it worse <laughs> because I would wait until I was already at the boiling point before saying anything, right? It was just it was this, this self-perpetuating cycle, right? So the, you know, there's a reason why we, we work heavily with people on their boundaries, especially in the Woo Squared program is because, you know, there's a lot of pieces and parts that go into boundary setting, right? And so I want to start off today with just some simple exercises for how to set a boundary and some expectations for what, to ha what will happen if you do start to set boundaries or when you start to set boundaries. First thing is, is that you have to recognize that you have established relationships in which you have no boundaries and that the rules of the relationship are that you have no boundaries. And so you need to recognize that when you start to set your boundaries, you're going to piss some people off because they expect you to have no boundaries because that has been the rules that you've set. So it would be kind and respectful to inform them that the rules are changing. It will be less surprising to them if you inform them. Now, do not expect them to believe you when you say that because you don't follow through when you have no boundaries, right? Anything you do for you doesn't get followed through on because your boundaries suck and everybody always takes other, other precedence over you. So they will not believe you, but at least they will have been informed so that when you do start to change your pattern, they can't say they were surprised, right? Well, they can, but they won't have a foot to stand on because you warned them, right? Okay, so warn them that you are changing and expect them to go, yeah, 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 whatever, right? Because, you know, you're changing. And very few people actually do change, and so you can't really blame them for not believing it. So now the next thing you have to do, you have to learn how to say no effectively. And when you've been a people pleaser for a very long time, saying no effectively is very difficult, right? So what you have to learn how to do is just say no. Do not explain it. Do not apologize for it. Just say no. 
everything you say after the word no gives the other person a way to talk you out of your no. Every explanation you give gives them a way to talk you out of your no. And so you want to just say no. And they're going to be like, well, why not? It's just, I don't have to give you a reason. Just no. I don't want to do it. I'm not going to. Right? But why? I just told you why. Come on. No. <laughs> well, but, you know, Bob, we really need you. Blah, blah, blah. What part of the word no did you not understand? How was I unclear? Okay, you see how this goes? <laughs> Because what they're doing is trying to run over your boundaries. They're, they're trying to, to talk you out of your no. They're trying to do, get you to do what they want. They're trying to manipulate you into a yes. And here's the thing. If I can't trust your no, I can't trust your yes. Right? Because if your no is not solid, then when you say yes, I don't know if you're saying yes because you actually want to or because you felt like you had to and then you're going to blow it off or leave me in the lurch or, you know, do it half-assed or whatever because you weren't a full yes when you went in, right? So understand that the transition point is tough for people. It's really hard for people to understand. But once you get to that new transition point and you're very clear in your communication and you're just like, this is a yes and that's a no and that's, there's nothing in between, right? People, you become a very safe person to be around because people can trust your yes. They don't have to guess. You know, it's like in, in female communications, <clears throat> guys, you're going to learn something today. In female communications, we are told, uh, well, we are modeled from a young age that when you put a, an idea on the table for things to do, you have to provide three different possibilities for us to do. One of which you don't want to do, but the other person pro that but you know the other person would enjoy. One of which is that you would enjoy, and you don't know whether or not the other person would enjoy. And the third one of which is the eh, for both of you, and it is the other person's job to read your mind. And pick the one that you want to do, not the one that they want to do or that is meh. And if they don't pick the right one, then everybody's unhappy. <laughs> okay? It is a fucking nightmare of communication. And so I always have to train my women friends that I will give you multiple options sometimes. Sometimes I won't. I'll say, hey, let's do this. Right? But if I give you multiple options, it is because I truly want to do all of them. And I don't care which, because if I care which, I will just say, let's do this, right? It is a much cleaner, much safer, much less complicated, convoluted, bullshit way of communicating <laughs> because uh, it's so hard otherwise. And, and the, I, I know my ladies are laughing their asses off right now. And they're like, oh my God, yes, right? So this is, this is the thing. So this is what boundaries are about, right? You don't put anything on the table you don't want to do. You know, and, and don't put things on the table that you're willing to do, you know, begrudgingly. Don't, don't do that. Just do what you want to do. They can find somebody who will enjoy doing the other thing with them. Yeah. Go ahead, Josh. Yeah. I've been monologuing for eight minutes. No, <laughs> We've had so many deep discussions about boundaries, you know, in the, over the last two weeks, especially. So, and it's funny because as you were talking, I was like, oh shit, I remember my dream from last night, which was all about boundaries. So this is, this is great. Yeah. I want to, I want to add this out there for the men that are listening. When setting boundaries with your divine partner, use tact and also proper tonality. I don't know, you know, like just, just throwing that out there. I don't know anybody who's ever screwed this one up. I might have over the last few weeks, you know, don't, you know, you can set boundaries, set them firm and still set them in a way that isn't, you know, like an attack. Right. And this is, this is something that I, I really struggled with over the last couple of weeks is, you know, and, and we had talked about this is that there was still some wounds coming up for me that felt like I was under attack. So my MO was like, it was like this old energy, you know, back and forth with boundaries, you know, like this is her boundary. This is my boundary. How can we come together as, as one? And, you know, even in a divine partnership, there is that back and forth that, that, that when you set boundaries, it's like, how do, how do we make this work? We both want to make this work. And, you know, how do we get to the other side of it? And, and it's funny because I, I love my divine partner. I, I absolutely love her. And she's going to, 
either love or hate that I say this next piece, <laughs> but I'm going to say it anyway, because I think it's great for the podcast. So, you know, as, as we were going through some of our, our, our boundaries over the last week, or both of us, you know, spirit showed me a toddler, you know, it's like set the boundary and then a toddler sticking a, a toe over the other line. And I brought this up in conversation with her and she's like, and then I was talking about how you tell me all the magical things you do and tell me not what, you know, what not to do. And she's like, you do the same thing. And I just looked at it and I laugh and uh, it was great because that's what we do is we reflect back to each other that which we need to learn. Um, but, you know, the, but yeah. that, that boundary back and forth, it's just, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a fun process, but you know, outside of that relationship, it's, you know, like in, in a professional sense, you know, like I, I, I struggled with the same thing, you know, like people could text me all day long, you know, like, you know, people that need help all this, you know, and I, and I felt so obligated to just keep, you know, giving from this well that I felt like was, you know, filling me up. And then one day I'm like, I'm, I'm toast. And, you know, and like, I, I'm there cause there was no equal energetic exchange in it, you know? And then, and then I started setting a little bit firmer boundaries and I found that not only am I able to help people on a deeper level because they're more invested in, in the help that I'm offering, but I don't feel drained, which is the other, you know, the beauty of it. So I'll throw that back to you now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So in relationships, when we're in struggle, right, the key is to, to never look at your partner as the enemy. That's the key. Your partner is not your enemy. They're your partner. And if you see them as the enemy, then you're going to find a way to separate yourself from them. If you see them as your partner, then you're going to find a way back to love, right? And so that's, that's a boundary to set with yourself is that my partner is never the enemy, right? And so there's, these are all important things, but I also want to, I have to do a reflection for you before I forget. Um, you had a history of feeling attacked by your ex energetically, and then now you're feeling attacked by your partner. So this isn't about either one of them. This is about you mm -hmm. and feeling under attack. And so going and looking for the space underneath where the attack, you know, where is it that you feel it? So this, so what's her name? Oh God. What's her name? Her name is, I got nothing. Anyway, the book is existential kink. Carolyn, Carolyn, something. Anyway, the book is existential kink. And it is about sometimes when we have these challenging patterns that are showing up over and over again, it is because there is some sort of kinky, you know, not, not like sexually kinky in this case, but some sort of, I like to be in pain kinky, right? Thing underneath it, some, something that we get from it. So, you know, it might be, I, I like to feel important, and therefore, you know, I'm important enough that they're still paying attention to me, even when we're angry at each other or whatever. They, they're, they're so, so intensely involved with me that they're attacking me, right? You know, that, it, that could be something. But it's, I'm not saying it is for you, but I'm just saying just think about it and take a look at it. Because these are the sorts of things that happen when we see these patterns repeating in our lives, right? And so, <clears throat> um, but back to boundaries. <laughs> Josh is like, I wasn't expecting a coaching session on the episode, but yeah, I know you'll go with open it. So. To whatever the universe <laughs> gives me that helps me get through the, the, you know, the lessons in front of me, I, I don't care where it comes from. So thank you for all, I, I always am so grateful that you, you know, we feel comfortable enough to share that with me. So thank you. Yeah. So the, the boundaries that we set are, are multiple. There are multiple reasons why you set boundaries. Okay. So you set boundaries mostly to keep yourself safe, okay? And so when you are setting a boundary, it's because something feels uncomfortable, something feels unsafe, something feels not okay, something feels icky, something feels bad, right? Dangerous, whatever. And so you have to recognize that boundaries are a self-preservation mechanism and what happens to us when we don't have a safe childhood is, or if we're in a, a, an abusive relationship for any length of time, then we lose track of our ability to keep ourselves safe because we have been unsafe for so long that it just becomes a default. And we actually become quite reckless with our own emotions. 
and sometimes reckless with our bodies, right? So the, we need to reestablish these boundaries so that we can stop the recklessness, right? Because the recklessness is likely to damage us and we do not want to be damaged. Josh is laughing. Do you have some, you have a story to tell? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got a story to tell. No, you know, when we were tuning in energetically to each other, we were both having shoulder pain because we were both throwing shit at each other, you know, like, you know, unknowingly, right? Like we, it's just because of our, you know, our, our mutual operating systems based in a lot of this, you know, and it's, you know, it's the offer to, to up level. So this is all, it's, it's all very current. Everything is always in a, a alignment to what's going on in my personal life. And that's, you know, how it works. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you're doing Woo Squared right now, and, and it was so funny because you just, you're taking a vacation. This is actually like the two hours that you're not on vacation this week. And um, and you, you posted the other day, well, I opened my next lesson and it was an integration week. Because <laughs> so, we include integration weeks because the, the Woo Squared program is a year long. So I include, sometimes it's a week, sometimes it's two weeks for integration because that's a part of the process. And so he's like, as always, perfect timing. <laughs> It drove me a little nuts. I was like, well, now I got the time to really sit with it. And it's like, oh, yeah, just get get comfortable living again. I was like, ah, <laughs> but the, the, it's a reset for me, you know, like, you know, we go so hard in what we do all the time. You know, it's like the, the yeah. transformational work on ourselves and, you know, the, the you know, holding space and walking with other people during their processes. You know, like I, I realized working when I got out there on day two, yeah. I was like. I haven't done this for a year. I was like, I have been going once again for a year straight, even through integration weeks, you know, because I, I do something else. And I'm like, God, this is, this is, you know, it's, it, it, it takes a couple of days to really, you know, just kind of down. reset, reset. And, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this is, and that's a different kind of boundary, right? Is setting a boundary between work and not work, right? Which when you're running your own business can be very challenging, right? So, you know, um, when we are setting boundaries, it is for our own health and wellness, right? Safety, wellness, happiness. And sometimes a boundary is, this person is obnoxious. I want to not be in their presence, <laughs> right? I watched a movie. I watched a movie last night called The Meddler. And uh, it has Susan Sarandon in it, and I love her. But the, uh, the movie had this, you know, this guy that she had repeatedly said no to. And he, and then her car got stolen, and he offered her a ride home, and he tried to kiss her in the car, and she just beat the living crap out of him. <laughs> And he had the gall to act surprised. I'm like, how many times does she have to say no to you before you get that she said no, right? This is male privilege right there, right? And the expectation that because he was her knight in shining armor and, and took her home when she could have just called a freaking Uber, you know? It's not like it was like something amazing that he was entitled to kiss her now. It's like, mm, I don't think so. That's a boundary. She she had a great boundary. She just kicked the crap out of him because he, he sexually assaulted her, right? And he he had earned it, right? So these are the, the types of things. And women learn not to do stuff like that because men can get violent, right? And it's not safe. But, you know, if you take a little self-defense class, then it becomes a little safer for you to do that, right? So, yeah, these things. Eyes, throat, nose, ears, and nuts. Remember those. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> what she did. <laughs> <laughs> We're from violence, too. Just saying, uh, saying it for a friend. Yep. <laughs> yep. Especially if you've got high heels, don't forget the foot with the high heel. There you go. You know? Um, I don't yeah. personally own a pair. High heels make great weapons, <laughs> but I've never worn high heels, so I've never had to use that. But I used to walk around with one of those back in the day when I was young and, you know, getting home at one o'clock in the morning and, you know, whatever there they had, they have these uh, Tupperware orange peelers. Those are great ear rippers, face rippers. You know, I just walk around with that thing in my hand. <laughs> it's like, come on, baby, I will take you out. Right. You walk like you're a predator and then, you know, nobody, nobody bugs you. I could feel them. There was a couple of times I could feel the guy because there was a rapist on campus when I was doing that and I could feel him. 
and he was checking me out and my head was on a swivel and I was walking with this and I'm like, bring it. Please. <laughs> and he would he just mm-hmm. he's like, no, day. you are not my person. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not your person. Right. I will fuck you up. Right. It, it's, it's an attitude, but you know, the attitude isn't always going to save you, but it often will. So how did you, you come know, up with the last name Sparta? Predators. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Sparta was, the Spartans were my, my high school mascot. And, and yeah, Sparta, Spartan women were the most self-directed women in the world at the time. They actually ran the government and they did everything. They were also accomplished warriors of their own accord. And, you know, they had standard sayings where they would send their men off to war and say, come home with your shield or on it. And it's like, if you drop your shield to run, don't come home, right? It's, that's what they meant. And, you know, they, they were hard ass, hardcore, you know, very survival based warrior women because they had to protect the home when the men were away. So they had to be warriors as well. And so that's where that came from. I was heavily in my warrior self and I took it as a pen name in college. And, and then I took it as my real name when I got divorced, you know, eight years, seven years later. So yeah, it's it's a whole thing. Anyway, now that you know my life story, boundaries. <laughs> back to the topic. God, we're wandering all over the place today. Uh, but back to the topic. Boundaries are very much an important part of your life, and I had no idea where. For so part of this, you know, we've been talking about the the interpersonal boundaries for a while now, right? You know, when you talk about boundaries around keeping yourself safe, like I will do this, I won't do that, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and I, I, before I get onto the energetic side, I need to address something. So oftentimes when you're doing spiritual work, you will need to stretch and do something that scares you, right? If you're not uncomfortable, you're not actually doing anything in spiritual work. If you are comfortable and everything is is peaceful and copacetic, you are doing jack all except relaxing, right? And relaxing has a value, but it can't be the only thing you do, right? If you're not uncomfortable, you're not growing. So how do you reconcile staying in discomfort and growth with setting good boundaries? Because that was always a really hard one for me. And the answer is, it's, it's very difficult to discern the difference. Sometimes you're going to exceed your boundaries and you're not going to know until you do it. And that's okay. Okay. You just need to know going in that what you think your boundary is may not be what it is. (laughs) You may go past it and go, Oh, I didn't like that. Okay. Don't do it again. Right. We're in the experiential section of the process And it's okay to go, ah, that sucked. I didn't like that. Ah, and it's okay to change your mind in the moment too. If you are in the moment and it's going past your boundaries, you could say, I'm done. This is another thing that we don't remember to do because we were trapped as children in these uncomfortable, unsafe environments. And so we didn't have the ability to say no, even when we recognized that it was not okay. Okay. So First, give yourself permission to say no at any time. So, and I'm going to, I'm going to use a sexual reference for this because that's where it's probably the most obvious is you said yes to having sex. You're in the middle of having sex and you realize you don't want to have sex. Stop. Just stop. You're not obligated to finish. Just be done. Okay. You're responsible for your body. They're responsible for their body. It's okay. Just stop. Right? So, and that's probably the one where people are most codependent about it. They're like, oh, I'm now responsible for the other person's orgasm. No, no, no. You are not responsible for anything. Right? It's, you're responsible for your own well-being uh, first and foremost. That is your job. Right? So, boundaries are sometimes not recognized until they're crossed especially when we're learning how to have boundaries. And so 
you, the very first thing you need to do is give yourself permission to say no at any point during the process. Even after you've said yes, it's okay. Change your mind, say no. Okay. Now, <clears throat> can I, can I go forward from here? Yeah, yes. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I hear you guys asking me questions when I'm talking <laughs> and I need to stop what I'm saying and say, oh no, I got to say this thing now. So, okay. So let's talk about the energetic side now. When, <clears throat> when you are an empath, there is a way that you hold your energy field. And this is where the can my aura get a restraining order part of our title comes in. There's a way that you hold your energy field that is putting everybody else inside your aura. And that is the reason why you get overrun by other people's strong emotions, why you, you, know, you end up mixing your aura with your partners. And that's why it's so hard to break up with them. It's why it's so hard for you to be in a large group, in a crowd, things like that. You know, and so there are ways to fix that. There's actually a very simple process to fix that. And that's included in the free e-course called Boundaries for Empaths, same title as this. And you can find that on spiritguidesschool.com. And, you know, it's, it's a free course. So just go in and sign up for it because that, I promise you, it will radically change your experience of life when you get that process down because it is just huge. I, I want to say yeah, this does. is the, the, this is the one class that I, I choose to teach in person as well because of how powerful it is, how powerful it was in my process and the amount of change that I have seen just from this one simple course. And, these, and, and once again, it's so simplified it's, and it, and it works, you know, like the mind wants to make this like some huge, you know, hard process but the but the way in which you simplified it and the way in which it works i've seen so much transformation in people uh, you know in rooms they're like oh my god i can actually hear my own thoughts and not a bunch of other people's and i was like yeah weird huh also a little uncomfortable but we could talk about that too <laughs> yeah well, and we talk about a lot of it. I mean, the, the course includes a very simple downloadable PDF that you can like learn the process from, but then it also has coaching. There's a, well, there's a recorded coaching call included with it. That's like 40 minutes long talking about all the ways in which this impacts your life and how it goes and things like that. So, you know, these are great resources for you and they're free. So take advantage. All right. I think that's going to be it for this week. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And don't forget what you focus on is what you, what expands and what you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Show of the sun.